Social Media University. When I moved over and I went to North Carolina and I was working for the Canes, I had a chance to work pretty closely with the girl who actually ran their social media. And it was really cool seeing from a corporate side or a big organizational side how you can execute campaigns and how you plan those sorts of things. So I just had such an immense interest in it that it wasn't my job, but I was always always had my hands in all the, the social media projects that were going on. So I was there for about a year. I loved it. Um, I got a really great opportunity in Chicago to transfer my radio show from Raleigh to Chicago and Chicago is a top three market so it was one of those I have to go I would be so stupid to pass this up type things luckily I'm from Chicago so I actually got to come back home I hadn't been here in a few years like when I was in college I didn't come home I, I interned in LA during the summers so it was a minute since I've been back but I was like this is the time that I need to go so I came back um, I started working for the top hit station here and then I got picked up by the country station too so I had two radio shows on iHeartRadio and yeah. then while I was doing that I got picked up by the Chicago Blackhawks and I started working for them again very inch uh, very intermingled and very intertwined with all the media stuff and I really did think that that's what I was supposed to do but no matter where I went I somehow always became the girl that was overseeing all the social media because mm. my bosses always took notice that my own social media had somewhat of a following. I was very active on it. I always would go the extra mile. And I mean, this was before like Canva was a really big thing or over was a really big thing. I loved the Adobe suites. I learned about it in college. So like I would take the extra time to literally take videos of myself at the Hawks game or if I was doing MLB stuff or if I was at the station and I would put it into Adobe and I'd put cute stickers on it and I would do fun and all the stuff that people weren't doing, but it was a creative outlet for me. Luckily, a lot of my bosses took notice of that. So anywhere that I would go, they'd be like, oh, you're the social media girl. Wait, can you help with our social media? And it was just one of those things, again, that right place, right time, and it was something that I loved. So about a year and actually, no, two, two years ago, uh, July 2018, um, I lost my grandpa and I was I had so much going on at the time and I was very close with him and because of the jobs that I had and because of the unconventional hours that a lot of media personalities work I wasn't able to be with him as much as I wanted to and it was kind of one of those moments where I was like okay is this really what I want to be doing long term or is this just something that I enjoy do I want to be giving up holidays with my families do I want to be working long late hours and I couldn't say yes to that so when the time came around and it was time for me to renew my contract they actually were making budget cuts anyways and I was like you know what this is my sign that I kind of need to bow out so I didn't have a plan I left without a plan and within two weeks I was approached by the owner of one of the largest hospitality groups in Chicago he is a good friend of mine but he had also taken notice of my social media and was like hey we're gonna be opening up a I think at that time it was like their 15th restaurant they had never done any social media no Instagrams nothing like that and he was like I think that you have a really good shot at really handling all of our social media platforms for all of our restaurants and making it one of those destination spots for tourists coming to Chicago so I I was very lucky. I kind of moved right into that role as their director of marketing for all of their restaurants within their hospitality group. And that was where I learned so much. Like it, it tested me and it was a lot. I mean, think about it. Handling my own social media, let alone 15 other accounts. I was like, what did I just sign up for? This is insane. This is so much, you know, from content creation to planning, to the ads, to working with influencers. But had I not been put in that, in that role, I wouldn't have grown the way that I did. And I wouldn't have learned so much about not only business, but actually managing a team and managing timelines and really seeing what works and what doesn't. Because I think that's the one thing that a lot of us, we're always scratching our heads. Like, what's, what works on Instagram? What works on TikTok? What works on YouTube? You know, it's always constantly changing. I think a lot of times we want to blame the algorithm, right? We're like, oh, the algorithm hates us. That's why we're not successful. But if a lot of times, if you just kind of shift your mindset, look at what you're doing, look at the stats, look at what's being receptive, and you really play to your strengths, you'll see that the needle, the needle will slowly start to move. So that's kind of what I did with them. Got really great results, and I started having other businesses business owners in Chicago reach out to me on the side saying, hey, I see what you're doing for, you know, your current job. Do you do this on the side at all? And I was like, no, you know, I have I've got so much on my plate. I I got barely time to make it to the gym these days. I'm not doing any more social media. And it just got to the point where I was getting so many inquiries that one of my best friends, I remember having a conversation with her and she was like, Kat, this is such a big opportunity. You could go off and do your own thing. And I was, you know, I was nervous. I had never, I wasn't an entrepreneur. I didn't go to school for business. I was like, what about taxes? I don't even know how to do that stuff. And I just, at the end of the day, I was like, I really do think I could make this work. And I saw all the work that I was putting in at kind of that corporate setting. 
And I just kind of felt a little undervalued and underpaid. And I had so many ideas for different things that I was like, oh, I could do this and I could do this. So walked in there, quit my job. I was like, hey, I'm done. This isn't for me anymore. You know, no bad blood or anything. I just got to take things in a different direction. Well, then COVID hit legitimately a week later. Oh, no. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my gosh, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. I just walked away. I mean, I was I was making a very comfortable living there. And in Chicago, obviously, it's not cheap to live. So I walked away from my benefits, my 401k, everything. I was like, I'm done. See ya. COVID hits. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is, you know, nobody could have ever ever predicted that 2020 would have turned out the way that it did. I'm living in this awesome apartment in downtown Chicago. I I made the decision to to move back in with my parents actually during the pandemic. So I was like, I just need to regroup. I need to figure out how I'm going to move forward now. I can't put my tail between my legs and go back to my job. Like they're not even open right now. Restaurants are closed. So what do I do? And so I moved back out with my parents. I gave myself like a month to kind of regroup, just kind of did some soul searching. And I was like, you know, you could really use this time and just stay stagnant and wait for people to come knocking on your doors again. Or you can use this time and get really active on social media because that's what everybody was doing, being stuck at home and use it to your advantage. So that's, I chose that route. I kind of took a look at my strengths when it came to social media, what I wasn't good at or not wasn't good at, but what I could have, you know, brushed up on. I learned how to build websites. I learned how to code. I taught myself how to do like SEO stuff. Being locked in a house with your parents, you, you, you get creative. So I started learning all those different skill sets and I built myself a website, kind of wrote down like a tentative business plan, put together some packages. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there. I have a pretty good following on my social media. I'm going to see if anybody bites. Within one day of making my website live, I got my first uh, inquiry and I signed that client right on the spot. It was the coolest moment ever. I remember running downstairs and now looking back, it's like my business has changed so much since then. Um, But in that moment, it was like, oh, my God, mom, I got a client. Somebody wants to work with me. It was just the coolest thing. And I was so fortunate because when I finally decided to launch and get everything in motion, we were kind of approaching the summer seasons, which is huge here in Chicago. We only get warm seasons like three months out of the 12. Out of the 12. Yeah. When you get them, you take advantage of them. So a lot of the businesses that were still operating and were, you know, Chicago had kind of let up on their restrictions. We were able to have, I think, like 25% capacity. And so just the ball started to get rolling and I got a ton of inquiries through Instagram. So I think month one, I had five clients. By month two, I had about 10. And I just rode high on that momentum and just, you know, I was working a lot. That is the one thing that I I think a lot of people with social media don't truly understand is how much really goes into it. Like you see the polished, you know, photo or the final caption or the hashtag set, but you don't see the planning, the strategic partnerships that you're partnering with, or, you know, the strategic moves that you're making to, to grow your brand, your business. You don't see the campaigns. You don't see the shoots. You don't see the long hours. And so I was definitely putting in like 15, 16, 17 hour days sometimes, getting up at 5 a.m., staying up till 2, 3 a.m. working on projects because I just didn't want to say no to anything. I was like, I'm going to take everything I can get right now because again, 2020, who knows when it's all going to go away. So I just was very lucky in the sense that I I had a really good set of systems in place for my my job overseeing all the hospitality stuff brought that into my new my new job and I'll be honest I didn't think that it was going to take off the way that it did um I was like hey, this will probably be a side hustle maybe I'll make a couple grand every month maybe I'll make five hundred dollars every month I don't really know and before I knew it I was like I have myself a business here and I I actually need help and I need to start running this like a business owner so. That's when I kind of took a step back, reevaluated everything. Because at that time, when I launched, I was only offering social media management on Instagram. So since then, now we do, you know, website optimization, SEO. Um, I do one-on-one coaching. I do business consulting for businesses that have an in-house person that I will teach them, you know, how to be more strategic or what type of things that they should be doing to reach their audience. I have products now. So it's definitely flourished within, I mean, in March or in April, it'll be one year. So in less than a year, it's it's completely changed my life in the best way possible. But I always just tell people, just take the jump. Just take the jump because when you only have yourself to rely on, nine times out of ten, you're not going to let yourself fall. 